Like you, Newsish, I can remember a time where America was a prouder country. We achieved great things like the creation of the light bulb, the telephone, the microprocessor, and the internet, where the greatest minds of the world flocked to our schools and to work in our nation. When we weren't afraid of the future, where we as individuals took care of ourselves and were proud that we didn't need anyone else, but we were still noble enough to voluntarily help those in need. America is still that great nation. We don't need these government crutches to make us a weak, independent people. We certainly don't need to force each other to buy what health care and services we think is right for everyone else. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave. America is championed by the rugged individualist, not the Frenchman who claims to have a right to employment. We earn our employment and our wealth with the sweat of our brow and the capacity of our minds, not by using the government to take the wealth of others. Furthermore, we are a land of United States. That is not just a name, it means something. America is a great land, but I am a Virginian before I am an American. I don't need Washington bureaucrats breathing down my neck to make sure I live my, lo my life by their guidelines. You Nuges live hundreds of miles away in California, and yet you seem to be begging to be ruled by the foreign power in Washington. We Americans refuse to be ruled by Britain across an ocean. Why should we stand by and be ruled by Washington across a continent? Each one of our states has the capability to govern us, and each one of them is held accountable to us 50 times more closely than Washington is. I have no business managing your state of California through my representatives in D.C., and you have no right to do the same to me. Massachusetts has already taken up the cause of universal health care of its own volition. It has proven that states can take up that responsibility. Every nation in the European Union has proved that small states can run effective health care systems, and Nuzis, I know you would agree with me there. So why are we doing something entirely different? Why create a top-down, centralized solution that can't possibly experiment and adapt as well as 50 individual systems can? Our Founding Fathers considered the states to be the laboratories of democracy, because through their independence and variety, they will be able to learn from each other and improve their performance. There is absolutely no reason to leave this in the hands of Washington. Newsish is right that we should hold our government responsible. We should strive to be better than anyone else. But I say that I want my Virginia to be better than everyone else. We need to reclaim our pride, we need to reclaim our passions, and we need to reclaim our state autonomy. In regards to big government, you call government a tool, and it is. That is true. But so is the market. The difference is that the government is a tool of oppression. It holds a monopoly on violence. Although it is a vital tool to society, it is also the most easily and commonly abused tool that humanity has ever created. It's also a tool that completely lacks any amount of finesse. It is a bludgeon, not a scalpel. It helps somewhat to use local governments because they are much more delicate than the federal government bludgeon, but even local governments will never gain the agility of the market. Just look at the many examples around the globe where private market forces that we have taken for granted have improved the lives of millions at no expense to anyone. My personal favorite example is Muhammad Yunus and his for-profit Grameen Bank. You may have heard of him. He's probably the most heroic banker that you'll ever know. His micro-lending program has allowed millions from Bangladesh, India, and across the globe to raise themselves out of poverty by being able to buy a small amount of equipment to start making products on their own. His bank has single-handedly raised more people out of poverty than his government in Bangladesh has ever been able to, and even our own government can't match that. What's more, he has done all of this without relying on charity. All of, all of those who have invested in his bank have earned a healthy profit. Just try to imagine our own government managing to raise millions of Americans out of poverty without costing the taxpayers a penny. It can't be done. Government is not the answer. We have serious issues here in America with our health care. I will be the first to admit that. But none of our services are perfect, right? Our shoes can always be made better and cheaper, as can our computers, our banking, and our energy production can all be improved one way or another. If any of these things were to be improved dramatically, they would vastly improve our lives. But then, 
why do we leave these things to the markets? Why don't we just nationalize all of our services and simply demand higher standards from our government? I'll tell you why. It is because it doesn't work. The USSR tried to make it work. China tried to make it work. India, Cuba, and Britain have all tried to make it work. What happened to them all? They all kept it up as long as they could until they either saw the precipice they were headed for right ahead of them, or they fell right into it. Nationalization and centralized planning is not the answer, and it is especially not the American answer. There is nothing special or mystical about the medical field that somehow makes it a special case where government suddenly becomes better at providing services and prices in the market. The medical field is an important service, just like all the other things that American businesses perform for us. To be consistent, you must accept that either the market performs better than the government, or the reverse. When you do that, when you look at the big picture and all the history behind it, the decision becomes very easy. In conclusion, America is not a nation that needs large centralized government interference to help Americans get through their lives. If you still think that the government should be playing a role it currently is not in the United States, then advocate that for your state. Diversity is one of America's greatest strengths, and that does not simply apply to culture and race. It must include political diversity. Let us go forward and make our nation a stronger, more free, and more independent union of states.